Sculptors, I am so glad you're here. I am happy to be here to talk about machine quilting feathers. Uh, we're working this week on lesson three at long last. Many of you have been um, emailing me and leaving comments. Are we going to continue doing this? And the answer is yes. Um, I needed uh, some time to improve from my winter that shall not be named that dealt with four months of COVID and pneumonia and all of that. But I'm back. I'm breathing, um, converting oxygen to carbon dioxide beautifully once again. So I'm ready to get back to work. Hopefully you're ready to get feathering. Uh, let me just check for some comments. I have another device here. Let's see where we're at. Um, trying to remember how to use all the technology together. It's been so long. Let's see what the comments are. Let's turn the volume off so I don't have to listen to this. Hello, Sandal. I'm glad you're here. Hello. I see people as Facebook user, um, but I can see a couple comments on my phone. So hello. Um, for those who are, this is your first time working, um, joining us for the Feather Along. Did I lose everything here? Now there it is. Um, working with the Feather Along. I want um, to let you know what this is. I have a class, an online class called Machine Quilted Feathers, and it's available at debbiebrownquilts.com. Click on the classes. Um, so click on online classes right at the top and it'll take you over. Right now there's a sale on the Machine Quilted Feathers class. So please, um, please take advantage of that if you've been waiting for a sale. It's $25 off. It is a 10 lesson class with um, a bunch of different patterns, videos, you get to keep the class forever. Uh, so, so it's, a, it's an, um, it's, it's a for you. I'm stitching flexible feathers along the spine. What is happening? Oh, I know what's happening. I'm sorry. I was downloading a video. Okay. So now I know what that is. Whenever I, um, when, what I was hoping to do at the beginning of this year, oh, thank you for, 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 for uh, giving your comments on the class. I'm really proud of the class. Uh, it, it's all the basics that I want you to have um, about how to form a feather. And this works on domestic machines and also works on long arms. So the cl entire class is filled on a home sewing machine, but I also teach this on long arm machines as well. I'm one of the weird people who likes quilting both ways. I really do quilt this way and I really do quilt this way. And you can't tell the difference which is nice. Um, I, it's kind of the same. Oh, the class is amazing is a comment I just got. Let me put, let me see. I'll, there we go. It's a great class. The feather class is amazing. So I'm, I'm just checking out my technology. So um, it's a 10 lesson class and I give you practice with purpose patterns. Um, say that one time slow and see if you can get all the peas out. It's a good thing I don't have a microphone because I tend to pop my peas um, while I'm speaking into a microphone. Whenever, uh, whenever I did this, it's a great class, but I realized that people wanted a chance to ask questions in real time. And that's what this is here. It's gonna, it's Wednesday nights in my um, Facebook group and it's also archived on YouTube um, for people who don't have Facebook. So, what um, I, I have class one out there, lesson one out there and lesson two out there. They are reinforcements and a little different way to um, talk about the feathers. It's not a duplicate of what I do in the class. The class is something different. Uh, let me reach down and get this. This is the project for lesson number three. It is a bench pillow and this is the feather that we're gonna be talking about. It's a flexible feather that fills the area of your quilt. Now. I love this feather and I love that bench, this bench pillow. I will tell you, if you don't have a bench, I don't have a bench. If you don't have a bench, but want to um, make the pillow, it's a great pillow upon which to prop yourself on the sofa when you are on it for 
three to four months with COVID and pneumonia until you go until you're hospitalized. So I lived with that pillow this winter. Um, it was fantastic. So a bench pillow, highly recommend it. And it's a great project to practice on. Um, the difference, I said I talk about home sewing machines and long arm machines. And the difference between quilting on them is long arms, you tend to quilt your feathers left and right um, because your fabric is out on a frame and it's very long and it's as deep as you can reach. So you may have 12 inch depth, you may have a 15 inch depth, you may have an 18 inch depth because your quiltable space is not quite as large as your long arm. So even if you have a 24 inch long arm, you might be only able to quilt 20 inches of feathers. And I do have a 24 inch long arm. Um, I could quilt 24 and in 20 inches of feathers, but I can't see 20 inches of feathers. So I really only quilt about 12 to 15 inches at a time because that's the limit of um, the focal distance of my glasses. What else? So um, long arms, I'm going to quilt my feathers left and right. On a home machine, I'm going to quilt my feathers up and down because I have this little opening on a home sewing machine and I don't want to try to smush all the fabric into and out of the sewing machine. I want to run my feathers up and down. So that's the major difference between um, quilting on a long arm and quilting teaching quilting on a long arm and teaching quilting on a home sewing machine. Yes, one, you move the machine and one you move the fabric, but the tips are still the same. Um, when people, uh, many people will say, oh, I think I know the shape of a feather and I can make two or three of them, but then they tend to go off. And that's a good problem to have um, because if you can make two or three of them, then pause, make two or three feathers, then pause, make two or three feathers, then pause. Because what happens to me is my hands move faster than my brain. And as I'm quilting, or as I'm quilting, I'll make my feather, um, but my hands are going to make excellent time, but my brain no longer knows where I'm going. So I have to stop my hands or stop my hands and then repicture the feather, maybe go down and finger draw it the next two or three feathers and stitch those. When I started, I made one feather made one feather. And then eventually I could do two feathers in a row without stopping. And then three, and now I can do a whole line of them. But that's the way I recommend getting started with your feathers, regardless of home sewing machine, stitching up and down, or long arms, stitching this way. For both types of feathers, I do like to stitch the top and bottom feather or the left and right side of the spine in the same direction. So on a long arm, I would go left to right, make a knot, go left to right. If I'm doing a long border or like this pillow I showed. If I'm doing um, a, a border or this long pillow on a home sewing machine, I will go top to bottom, break the thread and then go top to bottom. I have had students tell me, it's my goal to be able to go up one side of a feather and back down the other. And my thought is always, well, it's my goal to make a feather that looks good. And I can't make feathers that look good if I go up one side and down the other. If you can, that's great, but it's so not where I recommend. And especially on these feathers, these feathers really tend to work better if you do them in the same direction, um, just because they work best from the bottom up. So any questions that came up so far? Let me check the, uh, let me check the comments. Oh, Janet, thank you. And Sherry's here, hi, Sherry. Hi, Kathy. It's good to see you all, too. Hello, Marilyn. It's good to be here. Um, I got some emails yet, even yesterday responding to my newsletter that I just sent out. If you haven't subscribed to my newsletter, go to DebbieBrownQuiltsScroll.com, scroll all the way to the bottom, and it'll give you a place to sign up for the email. I don't email you unless I have something to tell you, so I won't spam you every day, um, which means you didn't get a newsletter for a long time because I wasn't doing any work. Uh, I was concentrating on getting better so I could come back like this. Um, I got some questions in the newsletter yesterday uh, based on the newsletter. Oh, have you had any new color block patterns out? Um, which is another, another free class. That's a free class online. And no, I haven't added to that yet this year, but I know what's coming next. Um, slowly getting back to work. So let's talk about what the feathers look like. Let me see if I can pull up um, a drawing screen. Let me share my 
screen, this is a technology issue. Let's see how I'm going to do this. Be kind to me. Share screen. I want window. Here we go. I'm going to share this. So a lot of people ask, what drawing program do I use? Um, and actually leave me a comment to let me know if you can see a whiteboard right now because I can't see what you're seeing. Let me see if I can see that. Oh, good. I can see it online. So this is Word on my computer. I am, um, I'm a, a PC rather than Apple. And this is uh, simply Word. And I have a pen that I draw with. So there is my pen. Whenever, um, whenever I'm making feathers like this, the first thing I do is make the spine. Uh, you can make the spine with a ruler. You can make the spine using a flexible curve. Uh, like my husband had one from engineering school way, way back in the 80s, and I stole it. Um, so I can draw, make that gray bendy thing to make my feathers, or you can do a free motion spine, whatever works best for you. And the, the joy of the flexible feather uh, is that it fills the entire area. The feathers that we've done already in lessons one and two we're like this. And the border is what you see on the screen. So this is the whole area to be quilted. And I have to do some sort of background stitching behind here or whatever. With this type of feather, the flexible feather that we're talking about, um, I can fill the entire area with feather. So whenever uh, you go to lessons one and two, talking about the shape of the feather, I talk about stitching up a ski slope around a circle and back down. Yes, it looks like toes. I get that. Um, you're still going to do the same thing, but all of your circles are going to be out at the edge of your quilting area. So I am going to go, let's see, I'm going to go up the ski slope, around the circle and hold the curve back to the line. Now, if I cut that shape out and hold it up, it does not look like a feather. Um, it looks like a piece of kielbasa, a hot dog bratwurst, something like that, but it doesn't really scream feather. It's when you put them all together that it looks like feathers. So I'm gonna do another one going up to the top and around, up the ski slope, around the circle and back down, up the ski slope, around the circle and back down. Uh, so those are my feathers. If I'm going to continue doing that, it's going to get weird here because I have um, more space to cover down on the spine than I do have available up here at the edge of the, of the quilting area. So what are we going to do about that? What I'm going to do is I'm going to quilt a short feather and then a taller feather and then a taller feather. Sorry, my pen's not working very well. And then a taller feather like that, so that I take up more space on the spine and less space up on the top. And if I still have more curve, I'm gonna do the same thing, a little one, a little bigger, a little bigger, and then go on my way. So when I'm at the top of a hill, I will just stitch my feathers normally. When I'm at the bottom of the hill, I have to, um, I have to take up more space. Uh, then I'm going to cut my thread, start back over here and start again. Now, when I'm stitching these, I am not paying attention at all to the feathers on the other side of the spine. I'm not trying to mirror them. I'm not trying to match them. I'm just letting them be what they're going to be. And I'm going to put feathers on this side. So here's going to be a little one, a little bigger one, a little bigger one, a little one, a little bigger one, and a little bigger one. Now, sometimes I might only do two feathers tall, and sometimes I might do four feathers tall. It's whatever's filling the space. And then I'm at the top of the hill here, even though it's upside down. And a little one, a little bigger, and a little bigger. So that's how I work on my feathers. Let me stop sharing and come back and see if there's any comments. 
So let's see. Um, you can make the, the pillow into a table runner. You made a table mat from part of a quilt pattern that was in the feather class. It gave me a shorter version. Um, you had too many UFOs to quilt, so I didn't want to make more work for myself. Oh, I'm so glad that worked for you. I just try to give you ideas of things to practice on that aren't a queen size quilt. And those feathers, um, it really helps me. Um, it really helps me uh, fill the space, and it's a really quick fit. It's one of my favorite feathers if I'm trying to do something quick. So let's see. Someone's having some buffering problems. I hope that's, um, to be honest, I hope that's at your end and not mine. I'm the feather queen. You're so polite. Thank you. Later on, I'll have to go back and see names because all I'm getting is Facebook user, YouTube user on my comments right now. Um, but I, I'll let me highlight this comment so that if you take the, if you um, purchase my class and you get the pattern for how to make a bunch of projects. So in the class I've made, um, I made, I had a table mat pattern and that is actually hanging on the back of my armchair in my living room. Uh, also fits my, it, it's the shape of my coffee table is, is how I came up with the glorious shape of it. So I have that in there. I have um, some, some other smallish projects, small quilts, things like that. But these are the feathers. Now the one tip that I want to give. Oh, so I see no buffering. Thank you. Um, I really, um, I just got another new computer because I dropped mine. Um, the, I, I think I make it about two and a half, three years on a computer max before I drop it and have to get a new one. But it also works out because I always get a really fast computer since I do broadcast video and such. Um, now, uh, a hint, if you are not going to take the feather class, a hint I like to give that I don't want to, um, that I don't want to hide behind a paywall. If you are trying to fit, like this is the end of the quilt here and then I sew the flange on, or right now I'm doing a, a quilt that has a feathered border on it. Um, I'm working on that in my studio. I'm broadcasting from the kitchen today. Um, if you are at the edge of your fabric, like if this is the outer border, the outermost border, don't stitch your feathers to the end of the fabric because when you bind your quilt, you will bind off the tips of your feathers. And the very easy solution I have for that is a piece of quarter inch masking tape. And I put that around the edges of many of my quilts because if I simply draw a line, you know, just take a quilt marker and draw a line a quarter inch in, I have a great ability to be able to stitch that feather right over the line. I can ignore lines. But if, um, a piece of tape is a physical barrier. Um, and it actually feels different when the needle goes over tape than when it goes over um, fabric. So it'll like, oops, I went over too far and then I'll have to take the feather out. Um, so that's just, just a helpful hint. You only have to bind off your feathers on two quilts before you learn to take some, um, some action and not, uh, not stitch over the tips of your feathers. Now, earlier I had a, um, a video that I downloaded. So let me see if I can play this for you. All the things I'm trying to remember how to do now. Let me find my window of the video. No, it's not a Chrome tab, it's a window. Hmm. There it is. Okay. I'm going to play you a little bit of a video here showing quilting these feathers on a long arm machine. So let's pull this up. Ooh. And turn it on. Stitching flexible feathers along the spine. Thank you. 
I'm going to pause that, stop sharing, and come back and say hi. Hi. Um, so I showed that video um, for two reasons, to show that I teach the same thing on the long arm that I teach on home sewing machine. Uh, there was tape across the top of that border so that I wasn't stitching over into the binding area. Um, and also to show why I mostly film on home machines, because when I'm long arming, I move into the camera and you get to see you know, my arm, the back of my head, things like that. On a home sewing machine, the camera can stay in one place and the quilt moves. So it's logistically easier. It's tougher to film on a long arm because a long arm moves. Um, and now on a long arm, I'm going to stitch down the side. I'll show you the next section of the video to stitch down the side border. Did I lose that one again? Let me find it. Oh, technology. There we go. So here I am stitching down the side border. I have my handy quilter wave B ruler and I am using the, I believe it's two inch side, 10 inch by two inch. So I am lining the midline up with the middle of this block. And when I do that, it is a quarter inch away from the seam down here. And that's how I'm going to use the ruler. So I finished that first ruler, I'm moving it down. And I can only quilt as far as my machine will allow. I'm gonna run into my belly bar. Quilting to the peak of the ruler, making a knot. And then I will quilt feathers on each side. And then I go back up to the top and stitch feathers on the other side. I forgot to turn the light on my long arm off. I'm sorry, it's a, just a brief time. It's going to look grainy. Now, so when I stitch feathers on this far right side, I wanna make sure that I don't stitch my feathers out into the binding area. I can take a piece of quarter inch quilters tape and tape it down the side, um, or I can draw a line or I can remember not to do it. I have bound off the top of my feathers before. It's not my favorite experience. stop when I go as far as I can, make a knot, roll the quilt up, quilt the next section and finish the border on the right side all the way down. So let me stop sharing, come back and say hi. Hello, there we go, I'm back. Hello from Florida, Annette. I'm glad you're here. Uh, so again, I apologize for the graininess of the video. That's what happens if the light on the long arm 
and the camera don't play well together. I just forgot to turn it off. So um, whenever I'm working on a long arm, I like to stitch them left and right, feathers left and right, because otherwise I have to break them into sections going down the side. Um, I could leave my side borders unquilted until the quilt is done, take the quilt off the frame once it's done. So do the top border, the whole middle and the bottom border, take it off the frame, turn it sideways, pin it back on the frame. So now the two side borders are now the top and bottom borders. So I could do it that way, or I could do what I did, which is quilt in a section, make knots, quilt in a section, make knots. Um, if you're a home machine quilter, you're just gonna quilt straight down. Just quilt all the way down without making any breaks. So um, I've taught at a lot of quilt shows around the world. Uh, someone was asking me all the places I've been today. So literally um, five continents, seven countries, 42 states, I think is the tally um, What until the beginning of 2020 when the world closed and I'm starting to travel again. So we'll see what happens. Nothing international for a while. Um, so what I'm doing, uh, when I've taught, I will teach on a long arm and the people, the students in the long arm class will go, oh, the long arm's just the best way to quilt. I can't imagine trying to do this on a home machine. We're quilting the right way. And I go, why? Yes, you are. And then I may quilt later in the day at the same show on a home sewing machine or a stationary long arm. And students will say, oh, people who take up their whole room with this great big machine. Um, I just think this is so much better. We're quilting the right way. And I'm like, why? Yes, you are. Um, because I think as long as you're quilting, it's the right way. I love my children equally, whether you're quilting on a home machine or a long arm. Um, and there's benefits and drawbacks to both. The benefit to a long arm is you can see everything left to right and you don't have to baste your quilt. You just have to pin it on the frame. The benefit to, um, and, but the drawbacks are you don't get um, this, you don't get this side, you don't get the long length this way, um, and you might have to repin your quilt. The other, um, the other drawback is it's an expensive machine and takes up a whole room. Now I have one. I've had more than one. Um, I, I, I think I had three long arms and, and a stationary long arm in my studio all at one time. I'm down to one long arm, one stationary right now with home machines. So I get that. The On a home machine, the uh, drawbacks are you have to baste your quilt and then you have to manage moving the quilt. But the pros are it doesn't take up your whole room. You can quilt entire long stretches at a time. So there's pros and cons of each. Um, I don't want anyone to think that there's a right way to quilt. Some people prefer quilting by moving the machine. Some people prefer quilting by moving the fabric. Or sometimes you have space limitations um, so that you have to have a, a home machine or you have um, physical limitations that you have to sit or you can stand or whatever. So quilt however you want. These feathers work on both. So let me check the comments. Um, any, uh, any questions that have come up about these feathers? No? I'll give it a second because I know that it takes a while for the comments to come through because um, I'm using software. So it has to come through to Facebook or YouTube and then it has to come to me. But this week's lesson, um, you can watch this time and time again, either in this Facebook group, Debbie Brown's Machine Quilting Studio on Facebook or on YouTube at Debbie Brown Quilts. Uh, if you have uh, purchased the class, you can practice your feathers on this pattern here, either making it a table runner or making it as a bench pillow. Uh, next week, we're going to I'm going to meet again. We'll do lesson. Uh, I'll teach along with lesson four um, and then show other patterns, etc. So there are 10 lessons in the class. I think this is supposed to end around July 5th, but if anything comes up in between, that'll just push it out a little further. So thank you so much for joining, um, joining along. I hope this gave you some, um, some additional encouragement on your feathers. Uh, I always want to uh, to give you information. Um, I, but the class, I put a lot of work into it. And I really think it's valuable that you'll learn a lot if you work through the class step by step by step. Um, but for those who aren't going to purchase the class, who aren't sure, um, I wanted to give you an idea of what my teaching style is like, and to give you some information you could use. Um, 
access the class on my website. If you go to debbiebrownquilts.com, click the online classes, uh, it will take you to, and it's machine quilted feathers. Right now, there are two prices on the feather class. It's either $75 or a hundred. You choose which you wanna pay, but for the rest of May, the class is available for $75. Um, I do one major sale a year. It's around my birthday. So I just had a birthday. Happy birthday to me. And my gift to you is I put a class sale out. So um, the class is hosted on Teachable. So you do have to sign into a Teachable account and then just bookmark that um, so that you can go back and forth. And it's it's pretty easy to find. Uh, if you ever can't find it, go to DebbieBrownQuilts.com click over to classes and it'll take you over to my teachable site. It's a software platform that I use to host the class and hold the videos and things. And it's been, it's worked really well for the last several years. Oh, thank you. I did have a very happy birthday. I was in Boston with my children, their spouses and my grandchildren. So, and my husband. So it was, um, it was just a wonderful birthday. Uh, I learned a while ago to plan my own birthday parties. So they're exactly what I want. And my family is always willing to go along because it's usually a trip somewhere where we go do silly things. And that's what we did. So that was my birthday. But um, I would love to see what you're doing. You can post it in the Facebook. Um, you can post it in the Facebook group, the Debbie Brown's Machine Quilting Studio. Um, you. I'm easy to find. I'm at Debbie Brown Quilts on all social media. You can tag me on anything. I'd love to see what you're quilting. Um, oh, I look healthy. I am. Um, I was down with COVID from December 6th. I got out of the hospital early March. Um, and I it it took probably probably all two months since I got out of the hospital to feel this good. But um, I've had all the tests. There's no permanent lung damage from this winter of COVID and pneumonia. Um, I was diabetic from all the steroids I was on. That has also resolved itself. So basically I have absolutely nothing, no residuals from all of the COVID. Sadly, I got really sick with COVID because I'm immunocompromised. I have an autoimmune disease. So we're still trying to get my medication started again. Um, and I have, I'm having more disease repercussions, but the COVID is completely gone. And now I'm just trying to work on my general health. So I feel fantastic. Um, I've always been a very optimistic person and every day is a beautiful day. Every day is even more beautiful now because I'm up, I'm standing, the birds, the sun is shining, the birds are singing. Um, no, it's just beautiful to, um, to be able to run errands. Like, oh, I didn't have to park in handicapped parking today and could walk into the store and still be able to breathe. So um, very grateful and very happy to be here and very happy to be talking about quilts once again. So tune in again next week for feathers. Um, so you can subscribe to this either in my Facebook to subscribe, get noticed, uh, get notifications for my live videos or in YouTube to get notifications for my live videos. And if you happen to, oh, heaven forbid, have a plan on a Wednesday night, it will be stored in both locations on YouTube and in my Facebook group. Um, so you can go back and watch it. Uh, you can tag me, message me through all the social medias as Debbie Brown Quilts, and I'd be happy to answer your questions. Thank you so much for quilting along with me. And thank you also for your patience when I took an unintended five month vacation this year or whatever I did. It was it was really long, but um, I'm back. I'm quilting and I will be here next week um, at Debbie Brown Quilts Facebook page on Tuesday, just with general updates. And next Wednesday night in New York time, seven o'clock New York time, um, I will be back with talking about lesson four of feathers. Happy quilting, everyone. I'll see you again next week.